Last week, one of our pro members reached out with a request to cover an animation from a site we have explored before. If you have been following the channel, you might remember we previously recreated this stunning scroll animation from the same website where full screen cards slide in and out as you scroll. But there was more to the site than just that effect. One standout section featured this well executed scroll experience where columns shift position smoothly, images and content appear side by side, and each scroll reveals a new visual and text combination. I already had this on my radar and the timing felt right when the request came in. So after a few focus stars with GSAP and scroll trigger, I rebuilt the effect from scratch. As you scroll, the section pins in place. When you scroll further, the left column fades and scales down, while the right image column slides over to take its position, revealing a new image using clip path. At the same time, a new content block slides up into view from below. As you continue scrolling, the cycle repeats. On the next cycle, text transitions line by line using split text. And finally, the section unpins. In this video, I'll walk you through how to recreate this cool scroll timeline using HTML, CSS, JavaScript, GSAP, and scroll trigger. I've also created a Next.js version of this project, available exclusively for pro members. If you enjoy seeing such award-winning web animations broken down and rebuilt from scratch, give the video a like and consider subscribing. And if you'd like to access the source code for this project, along with hundreds of other similar micro projects and a complete new website template every month, you can check out the pro membership via the link in the description. All right, let's get into it. Let's start with the HTML. We'll structure the page into three main sections, intro, sticky columns, and an outro. The intro and outro sections will just contain a simple H1 each. This helps the page feel more complete and frames the animated section in the middle. Now the main focus is the sticky column section. This is where the actual scroll animation will happen. Inside this section, I'll add a wrapper div called sticky columns wrapper. This acts as the main container and helps apply layout padding on the sides which will need to match the visual structure from the reference. Next, we'll create four column divs. Each one will have the base class column plus a unique identifier like column 1, 2 and so on. The reason we are adding four columns is because of how the scroll sequence unfolds. The animation starts with two columns visible side by side. Then as the user scrolls, a new column enters from the bottom. This happens twice. So in total, we need four columns to support all the transitions. Let's walk through what each one does. Column 1 will appear on the left when the section loads. It holds some basic content, a header and a paragraph wrapped inside a column content wrapper. This wrapper gives us an easy way to manage spacing and layout. Column 2 will sit on the right. This one holds two image elements, one that's visible by default and another that will animate in when the column slides left during the first scroll cycle. I have placed both inside wrappers so you can control their positioning and animate the rebel using clip path. Column 3 is the next one to come in, animating upward from the bottom. This column holds two content wrappers. The first one displays when the column slides into view and the second one will fade in when the column shifts into the left position later in the scroll. Finally, column 4 is the last column to appear. It simply contains another image representing the final step in the sequence. And that's the complete HTML setup. When we move into animation, we'll cycle these columns based on scroll position. As column 2 slides to the left, we animate the image travel. When column 3 takes the same path, we switch from the first content block to the second one using a line transition with split text. And then column 4 slides in to close out the sequence. That's the structure we'll use to drive the entire animation. Now let's jump into the CSS. Right at the top, I've imported a modern sensory font called DMSense from Google Fonts. This gives the whole layout a clean, minimal feel. Then I've defined a few CSS variables inside the root selector. These include the background colors, a lighter shade for the card surface, and a range of text colors for contrast. We'll be using these throughout the layout to keep things consistent. Next, I'll reset the base styles by removing all default margin and padding and setting box sizing to border box so layout calculations stay predictable. In the body, I apply the DMSense font globally so everything inherits it by default. Each section on the page will take up the full viewport. I'll set the width and height to match the screen and give them a dark background. I also hide an overflow. Now let's talk type. The main headings are large and medium weight with tight line spacing to keep things editorial. Paragraphs are smaller but still use bold text for better readability against the dark background. Images are styled to fully cover their containers. I am using object fit to make sure they stay centered and fill the space properly. 
In the intro and outro sections, I'll use Flexbox to center everything both vertically and horizontally. We'll limit the heading width to around half the screen and center the text to maintain balance on large viewports. Now I'll target the sticky column section which holds all of our animated content. We'll add light padding around it and then style the columns inside. Each column takes up half the screen width and the full height. We'll position them absolutely so they can animate freely without affecting layout flow and also enable transform optimization to make scrolling animations run smoothly. Inside each column, I'll apply color to the text using our foreground variables. Headings get a dimmer gray while paragraphs use the lighter white tone. We also kept the width of both elements so the text blocks stay tight and aligned. Then we'll position the columns off screen to prep them for animation. Column 2 starts fully to the right. Columns 3 and 4 are pushed down and to the right since they animate upward during the scroll sequence. I also give column 3 a bit of padding to match the visual spacing from earlier cards. For the card wrappers, we'll use consistent padding and full sizing. I'll give each wrapper a slightly lighter background large rounded corners and hidden overflow to keep animations clean at the edges. In column 3, we'll stack a second content wrapper directly on top of the first. This allows us to transition between two smoothly during the scroll interaction. Both wrappers use the same padding and layout structure. For the image transition, I'll place two images in column 2. One is visible by default, the other starts hidden with a clip path that reduces its height to zero. We'll also scale the image up slightly so we can animate it downward smoothly as it gets revealed. Now for the text animation, each line gets wrapped in a span, later using split text, and I'll hide overflow on the line container. This setup works perfectly with GSAP's split text plugin, allowing us to animate each line upward during the scroll transition. Finally, I'll set up a responsive media query. For screens under a thousand pixels wide, I'll reduce the font sizes for both headings and paragraphs, let the text stretch to full width, and decrease the padding slightly, so the layout feels comfortable on smaller devices. And that finishes the CSS. Now that everything is styled and responsive, we'll move on to JavaScript to bring the animation sequence to life. We'll begin the JavaScript by importing everything we need. First, I'll bring in GSAP along with two plugins, Scroll Trigger and Split Text. These will allow us to control scroll-based animations and animate the text line by line. I'll also import Lennis, which will use to enable smooth scrolling throughout the page. Once the DOM is fully loaded, I'll register the Scroll Trigger and Split Text plugins with GSAP. This setup is required so GSAP knows these tools are active and ready to use. After that, we'll enable smooth scrolling. To do that, I'll paste a block of code directly from the Lennis documentation without making any changes. This will handle smooth scroll behavior automatically and keep it fully in sync with Scroll Trigger. With smooth scrolling enabled, I'll move on to preparing the text. I'll define a helper function that helps select all the headings and paragraphs inside column 3. For each of those text blocks, I'll use the split text plugin to break the content into individual lines. Then I'll wrap each line in a span so we can animate them individually during the scroll transition. Once the lines are split, I'll set up the initial positions. The text in the first content wrapper will stay in place. We'll animate it out later. The text in the second wrapper will start hidden below the container. I'll move each line down using a translate Y value so it's ready to slide in when the second phase begins. At this point, we have smooth scrolling active and the text lines fully prepared for animation. In the next step, we'll create the scroll trigger logic that drives the entire column animation sequence. To control the animation flow, I'll first define a variable to keep track of the current phase. This helps us make sure each part of the animation only runs once, so we are not constantly re-triggering the same transitions every time the scroll updates. Next, we'll set up the scroll trigger logic that controls how the columns animate as the user scrolls. So let's create a new scroll trigger instance. We'll use the entire sticky column section as the trigger and I'll pin it to the top of the viewport as soon as it enters. I'll set the scroll duration to 5 times the height of the screen. This gives the user enough scroll distance to move through all three animation stages comfortably.
Inside the scroll trigger, I'll use the on update callback to listen to scroll progress in real time. This will run on every scroll tick and give us a number between 0 and 1, telling us how far into the section we are scrolled. Now we'll use that progress value to trigger animations based on the scroll position. In the first phase, when the user scrolls past 25% of the section, I'll check that we are still in phase 0. If we are, I'll switch to phase 1 and start the first transition. Here is what happens. I'll fade out the first column by lowering its opacity and slightly scaling it down. At the same time, I'll move the second column into view from the right and slide the third column up from the bottom. This gives us a clean handoff between guards. Then, I'll animate the image driven inside the second column. I'll scale up the image that's already visible and then reveal the second image by expanding its clip path. I'll also scale that image down into place as it becomes visible. Once we hit the halfway point in the scroll, I'll check that we are in phase 1. If we are, I'll switch to phase 2 and trigger the next set of animations. This time, I'll fade out and scale down the second column. Then, I'll slide the third column into the left position and bring the fourth column up from below. During this transition, I'll also update the content inside column 3. I'll animate the first set of text lines upward to hide them and then reveal the second set of lines by sliding them up from below. This gives us a smooth text web inside the same card that completes the first two phases of the scroll interaction. In the next part, we'll handle the reverse transitions so everything animates back when the user scrolls upward. If the scroll progress moves back about the top of the first phase, I'll check if we are currently past phase 0. If so, I'll reset the phase back to 0 and reverse the first transition. In this case, I'll bring back the first column by restoring its opacity and scaling it back to its original size. Then, I'll slide the second column off to the right and send the third column down and out of view. For the images inside the second column, I'll scale the first image back down to normal and hide the second image again using a clip path. I'll also scale that hidden image back up slightly so it's ready to animate again the next time we scroll forward. Then, I'll check if we are backing out of the second phase. If the scroll progress dips below the halfway point and we are in phase 2, I'll switch back to phase 1 and undo the second transition. This time, I'll bring the second column back into view, restoring its opacity and scale. Then I'll push the third column off to the right and slide the fourth column back down and out of sight. I'll also reverse the text swap inside column 3. The second set of lines will slide down and disappear while the original lines animate back up into place, just like they were at the start. By handling both forward and backward scroll like this, we make the entire animation feel responsive and fully reversible, no matter how fast or slow the user scrolls through the sequence. That wraps up the core logic behind the scroll driven column transitions. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.